Hello gamers, Barmy here, and in today's video we're going to look into why you should be using Wecorers when playing Hardcore World of Warcraft. In this video, we will learn how to monitor important spells and cooldowns, buffs and consumables, and if you stay until the end, I'll show you how to create a clickable Wecorer, which not a lot of people know about. Hardcore World of Warcraft is a version of the game where you only get one life. Death equals delete, so mistakes can be costly and you have to be aware of everything that's going on, all of the time. By using weak auras, we can see what we need to see, exactly where and when we need to see it. So let's go and have a look at how we do that now. Once you've got the add-on installed, type slash WA in chat to open up the options. Click new aura, and then click icon, and then give your aura a name. You can see that we have an aura template ready to program, but we need to give it a trigger to make it work. And here you see it's an aura, the unit is the player, and it's a buff. So then just fill in the aura name, and then close out of options, and we'll see if it works. Now here to test it out, you can see that we have no buff, but once we do, the weak aura displays it. To change the dimensions, just go to the display tab and change them to whatever you want. Just make sure that you press enter after whatever the number is, otherwise it won't change it. The X and Y offset are where the weak aura is located on the screen, and you can see that this changes as we move it around. I'm going to change the X and Y offset back to zero now because I want to put this aura into a group later so that'll make sure that everything lines up. Now I'm going to make another weak aura for my judgment spell so I do the same thing. I click new aura, click icon, I call it judgment but this time I need to make sure that the trigger is for a spell so I change it from aura here to spell and I type in the name of the spell here. Then I click OK and close out of the options. Now, because both of the auras are set to zero on the X and Y offset, then they're both overlapping each other. So we will only see the one that's most recently activated. Now we can either move them around to where we want them to be or we can put them in a group. So that's what I'm going to do now. You want to make sure that all of the auras that are going to be within the group have a zero X and Y offset. Then you want to go to new aura, dynamic group, and then give your group a name. Drag and drop your auras into the group that you've just made. And you'll see now that if you click on the group, and then click on the auras, you can drag them around the screen just like you could before with the individual auras. And here's what that dynamic group looks like in action. Here we can change how the group grows. We can change it from down to horizontal. We can center the group up nicely on the X offset here. We can change the spacing in between the weak auras here. If you want to add a cooldown, click on the aura and go to display text in the display tab. Change the display text from percentage S to percentage P. And now that weak aura will show its cooldown. If one of your auras isn't quite lined up like we see here, go back into settings and change your X and Y offset to zero. If you want an aura to show when an aura is missing, then just set it up as show on aura missing in the trigger tab. 
The Load tab gives you options on when and when not to load the aura, as in if you're in combat or out of combat, a particular player class or talent. Have a play around with these settings to get it to work how you like. To monitor our consumables, we create the aura and the group the same as we did before. However, the trigger setup is a little different this time. You must remember that our consumables are items, so set your trigger type to item, and we want to monitor the item count, as in how many of that item you have. We want to set the item count to greater than zero, therefore it will only display the weak aura if we actually have that item in our bags. Items like healing potions that have a cooldown will need a second trigger, Set the type to item, cooldown progress, and then set show to show always. Finally, make sure that you've set all triggers required for activation and you're good to go. On the Rogue, we can track our throwing weapons as well as other consumables. Our sprint cooldown is located above the character pane. We can also use a progress bar to monitor spell durations such as Sprint, Evasion and Slice and Dice. In the Weak Aura options, click New Aura, Progress Bar and then give it a name. If you already have an aura that you would like to copy, just right click on it, hit Duplicate and give it a new name. Now you can change the look, the colour, change the location and most importantly, you can change the trigger to the new spell name. And you're done. You're good to go. To make a weak aura clickable, we need the dominoes add-on. Go into the domino settings and change the size, scale and location of the action bar to how you would like it. In this example, we're going to use Anti-Venom as the clickable item, so drag it to your action bar. Now, create a Poison Weak Aura, and the trigger needs to be Aura Player Debuff with the debuff type Poison. Now adjust the size and the location of your Weak Aura so it matches that of your Dominoes bar, and finally set the faded opacity of the Dominoes bar to zero and you've got an invisible, clickable weak aura ready to go. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, like, subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you in the next one.